Hello, uh, I'm Frank Campbell, I'm from IPC Irwin. Today I'm going to talk about Charles's Law, or sometimes known as the Law of Volumes. Um, it's uh, an experiment that most students are expected to understand within any curriculum. Uh, out of all the scientific laws that have to be reproduced into equations, this is probably one of the most simple. Uh, but, as I say, it is expected that students have a good understanding, so the idea is to do a practical experiment they can conduct themselves so they have that depth of understanding and the relationship uh, to what's trying to be explained, which is the relationship between temperature and pressure. The first thing I'm going to do is to talk about how to fill the capillary tube within the apparatus as we now supply the apparatus with oil and a hypodermic syringe and needle to fill the capillary tube. The reason that we do this is when we used to pre-fill it, if it got shaken about in transit, the bead often became separated and uh, it was best, we felt it was best to provide the oil separately for the teacher or the technician to fill it. Once I've shown you how to fill the, uh, the capillary tube, I'm then going to talk through the experiment and then I'm going to let you know some hints and tips about maintenance. First, as I say, be careful with the hypodermic. Just going to take some of the oil with colorants in it into the syringe. and then fill the capillary tube. So gently inject a bead of oil and it should be about between 14 and 15 ideally. You will see there's some residue here that will eventually uh, roll down to the, to the main body of the bead um, where you'll be able to take readings off the scale from the meniscus of the bead. Okay, um, as I mentioned, Charles Law is a relationship between gas pressure and temperature. So to the experiment, what we, what we have here is the Charles Law apparatus hanging from uh, uh, the, the, the retort stand, beaker with some water in, and what we need to do is note the position of the bead on the scale and take a reading of the temperature. Then we're going to apply heat to the water in the beaker and we're going to take a reading of the position of the bead and the temperature reading every 30 seconds. We'll then plot that on the graph and as I say you should be able to see there's a straight line. In reverse you should be able to cool it down to the temperature reducing and the bead reducing uh, its position on the scale, so that will show that the pressure is, is reducing in proportion to the temperature. So I'm now going to apply the heat with the Bunsen, and we'll see the temperature increase on the thermometer, and we should see the position of the bead moving. Okay, having worked through the experiment, I'd like to talk just a little bit about housekeeping and care maintenance of the apparatus. Um, should the bead ever become separated or it's elongated in this instance, uh, it's very easy to uh, fix that problem. You'll probably see there's some residue at the bottom here. This tube has been used many times uh, and it's a very, very simple procedure to clean it up. If the bead has become separated in any way, simply take it from the holder, place it in a beaker of warm water, leaving it on the spout at an angle, and as it warms up, the air will be dispelled through the uh, bead, which becomes 
less viscous and allows the air to expand. You can then, should you wish, keep the temperature high, take it from the beaker and shake it out or use a pipe cleaner.